I don't know if you've looked at uh, the second portion of yesterday's homework, uh, which is it's not going to be due until tomorrow. So 3.3 part two is due tomorrow. Um, yeah, the, the second part. Um, we're good. So you don't have any homework. Um, yeah, but you're not going to get it. Uh, I'll probably email it to you here in a little bit. Um, but it's not going to be due tomorrow either. Okay, so uh, so 3.3 part two will be due tomorrow. Uh, you will have another assignment to start working on at some point today, uh, but it will not be due tomorrow. What is tomorrow? All right, so uh, I want to go through the first couple questions were proofs, but they were two column proofs. Okay, they're they're called flow proofs. Okay, uh, you guys have seen flow charts in the past. Okay, um, and, and maybe other courses and. Uh, Kind of talk about how we use them in mathematics, and it's, uh, it's really not that difficult of a concept. Let's say I've got uh, a statement number one and a statement number two. Maybe those were two given pieces of information, okay? They are going to come together to come up with statement number three, okay? Uh, and inside both those, we'll have, you know, we'll have a statement and a reason, statement and a reason, statement and a reason, uh, and then... Maybe we got another given piece of information over here. They come together to make a new piece of information. So maybe this was statement four. Three and four come together to make five. Excuse me. Um, maybe that then allows us to make our final statement six, which is our, maybe our conclusion. Does that kind of make sense what we're trying to prove? Um, but really what happens is when I put these numbers in there, one, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. Those are those are kind of analogous to when we do a two-column proof. I've got steps one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, um, and then you'll have the same re same number of reasons on the other side. But what is nice about a flow chart is that we see here that because we've done this maybe um, other times where, uh, and I guess the way I've got this set up, maybe you don't recognize this right away. Uh, but in a two-column proof, we might use statements three and four to come up with statement five, right? Okay. But the person that's reading the proof has to kind of know that that's the process. That's what we're doing. We're using previous statements to come up with new states. In a flow chart, if I look at three, four, we've got arrows going to... Five. So is it kind of pretty obvious that it means that statements three and four are being combined to come up with statement five? Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Uh, so flowchart is nice in, in that respect uh, that you can see uh, what the, the two phrases or maybe even three phrases are uh, that uh, we're using to come up with something new. So we'll go through one of these. Um, they're, they're, it's really not any different than when we do the two-column proof. You're going to go through, you're going to draw everything you know about your given information. So when I look at this, my given information is that X is parallel to N. So I've got those two lines over there being parallel. Uh, we also have J, or sorry, not J, uh, 9 congruent to 5. Angle 9 congruent to angle 5. So I'm going to go in my picture and draw that in, 9 congruent to 5. Uh, and then wants to prove that J is parallel to K. So starting off with X and N being parallel, can you then show that J and K are parallel? All right. So we go through, and then we come up with uh, these statements, okay? Statement that X is parallel to N. Well, does that match up to that right there? All right, so that's, that's given information. All right. Now if I look at angle 5 and angle 1 are corresponding. Okay, if I come over here and I look at angle 5 and angle 1, I'm just going to highlight or circle them. 5 and 1. Okay, now I know, I wish I could zoom in there for some of you who are sitting in the back, but 5 and 1 are those corresponding positions in regards to lines X and N. Right, okay, so by naming things corresponding, by identifying them as being corresponding, you're telling me that you know what the definition of corresponding angles is, right? Okay, you, you know that they match position, basically, um, based on those two lines. Um, but when we look at this set of options here, you've got three things. And the definition of corresponding angles is not one of them. Okay? But they say apparent from the figure. Okay? Um, 
and, and that is really saying the same thing that our definition would. If I look at the picture, you know they're corresponding because you know from the definition where you can find them in the picture, don't you? That kind of makes sense? So that is kind of an analogous statement as saying definition of corresponding angles. Um, when you say it's apparent from the picture, that it can be gained from the picture, uh, check our answer, should say we're good to go. All right. Uh, now we see that this new statement that we're creating is now created from the two prior. Okay. If you know x and n are parallel, and you know 5 and 1 are corresponding, okay, x and n are parallel, so let's just focus on x and n. With that blue line and that blue line, okay, and you are just told that 1 and 5 were parallel, or sorry, 1 and 5 were corresponding, the blue lines are parallel, the angles are corresponding, so what's that tell you about those angles then? What do you know about corresponding angles if the lines that they come from were parallel? They're congruent. That's what they're saying here. Okay? And my reason is going to be exactly what we just said. Okay? Now, here's the thing. When you, especially in the way these flow charts are set up, we see the word corresponding. That's in the back of our head. That's what the kind of the, the key idea was that's going to make us allow us to say that those things are congruent. Do not select the first thing you see. Just, you know, a lot of people read this. Oh, corresponding. Select that one. Okay? Um, make sure you read these and pay attention to what they're stating in those statements. It says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. Was that the statement we need? Yeah, that's the first one. But if you read these, and, and they get flip-flop for uh, every person, uh, look at this one. It says, oh, we'll do that. It says, if two lines are corresponding, then alternate interior angles are congruent. I get a lot of people say corresponding, say, see that keyword corresponding, and they just click that one. Does that make sense? Make sure you read the whole phrase. And that goes at any time throughout the year. Read the whole phrase, analyze it, because they're going to, especially when you got options to choose from, they're going to try to trick you. Okay? So make sure you pick the right one. In this case, we want that first one. Um, okay? The next thing says, uh, Nine is congruent to five. And notice there's no arrows pointing to get this statement, right? So if there's no arrows pointing to it, then it had to be just, it kind of pulled it out of nowhere. Well, that out of nowhere was the given. Okay, so that's where that reason comes from. Um, but now we're using this phrase here, that statement, along with that statement, to come up with this one. Well, if I write those two statements, angle five, congruent to angle one, and angle 5 is congruent to angle 9. Are those two things the same? So what's that tell me about 1 and 9? They're the same as well. What property is that? Transitive. Okay. Now here's the thing with this wording. And this might be something you would see on maybe the end of course exam. If they start providing you some of the uh, things you could select. I put that down there and transitive isn't there, right? Okay. But is there a phrase, there's three phrases, corresponding angles are congruent, given, and then the idea that if two angles are congruent, or sorry, if two angles are each congruent to a third, then they are congruent to each other. That's the one we want, right? That one says the transitive property, okay? Um, that says if A equals B and B equals C, so two angles congruent to the third, so A and C both congruent to a third angle B, then you can say that A and C are congruent, okay? That's what that's saying right there. It's saying the transitive property. Um, it's just writing it out in words what we know the transitive property to be, okay? Um, that's kind of the catch a lot of times with, with some of the way these tests are written is that you might not see the transitive property written out. You might not see the definition uh, of congruence written out, okay? Um, but they might reword those phrases. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so we got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Now, these areas or these arrows are telling us from these two phrases, okay, which this one they just introduced. Let me clean some stuff up here. This one they introduced, okay. Nine and one are corresponding angles. Would you agree that nine and one are corresponding angles? Okay. 
Again, that's apparent from the picture, picture or given from the diagram. Um, but if we have 9 and 1 being corresponding, but we have also learned that 9 and 1 are congruent, okay? So you have corresponding angles that are now congruent. What does that tell you about the lines that 9 and 1 came from? Parallel. They're parallel. And that's where they make the argument that J is parallel to K because you have corresponding angles that are congruent, okay? So do not click on the first one that you see the word corresponding show up. Read the statements. If corresponding angles are parallel, is that the one I want to use? No. We've never talked about angles being parallel, right? Lines and planes are the things that be parallel. So that first option is not, not the one we're going to choose. If corresponding angles are congruent, and the two lines cut by the transversal are parallel, is that the one we want? Yeah, okay. And if you do kind of a elimination uh, of these two, they, they don't even talk about corresponding down here, okay? Uh, so we do want that second one. Just be careful that you read the phrase. I get so many people to come up and say, I'm selecting one that says corresponding. Yeah, but you didn't read all the phrase, okay? Um, just be careful. And we're done. Okay, so that's, that's a flow uh, proof, okay? Uh, this one here is a little bit shorter. Question number two is a little bit shorter. Um, but I like flow proofs. I, I'm, I'm more comfortable, to be honest with you, with uh, two column proofs, okay? Um, but I like flow proofs in, in the fact that they, they show you which statements you're combining. Um, 